uh, I call Chris Hipkins. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the people at home will be asking, if the government think this is a plan that's working, they'll be asking, working for who exactly? Might be working for the chief executives who are getting multi-million dollar pay rises uh, of the energy companies that the government have sold off, uh, but it's certainly not working for young Kiwi savers who have had the $1,000 kickstart cut from KiwiSaver. It might be working for the landlords uh, who are continuing to overcharge for cold, damp, mouldy houses, but it's not working for the tenants who are living in those houses. It might be working for people who are trying to sell a house, but it is certainly not working for the people who are trying to buy one, who are finding themselves priced out of the property market. And it's certainly not working for workers and small businesses who are continuing to be overcharged for their ACC levies. So let's look at what this bill does and what this bill signifies in terms of the government's track record. And let's weigh it up against the government's own promises and commitments at the last election. What was the number one promise that they made at the last election? John Key said that the government were back in surplus. He didn't say they were going to get back into surplus. He said they were in surplus, $372 million worth, to be precise. How has that actually turned out in, in actual reality? It is a $684 million deficit. Doesn't take a mathematician to work out that that is a one billion dollar failure on the government's part when it comes to delivering on that particular promise. That's broken promise number one uh, that is signified by what we're debating here today. Let's look again then at what that's going to mean in the long term for the government's, uh, for the government's track record. They're getting back into surplus next year, or they claim that they'll be back in surplus next year, $176 million surplus. Let's be clear about that. $175 million of that comes from cutting the KiwiSaver kickstart. That leaves $1 million left. Now, if they can turn a $372 million surplus into a $684 million deficit, what are they going to do with a $1 million surplus, which is effectively what they're leaving themselves in this year's budget? They promised that they were going to be paying down the debt. Let's remember, this government have clocked up more debt than any other government in New Zealand's history. Government debt it is at its highest level ever, and it has only taken the national government seven years to get there. They said they were going to get net debt down to 20% of GDP by 2020, and it is abundantly clear that that is another broken promise because they're not even close to making it. John Key promised New Zealanders that they would create 150,000 extra jobs. Failed. They're not going to deliver on that, at least 60,000 jobs short. He promised that New Zealanders that the average wage, rubbish they say over there, it's their own budget documents that show it. Uh, so anyway, uh, they promised that the average wage would move from $55,000 to $62,000. They're going to fall at least $3,000 short. Another broken promise. John Key, we, John Key said that the $1,000 Kiwi Saver kickstart would remain as it is now. Oops, another broken promise by the government. The Kiwi Stick Saver Kickstart was removed. That is where the hundred, uh, that's where 160, 175 million of the $176 million surplus is coming from, from the cut to Kiwi Saver. We won't be increasing taxes on already hard on hardworking New Zealanders, and we have seen that they have broken that already with talk of a capital gains tax for property speculators, airport tax charges uh, for those who are entering and leaving New Zealand, and a broadband tax, all in this year's budget all of which signify yet another broken promise. So, if this is a plan that is working, as the government claim it is, who is it working for? It is certainly not working for the New Zealanders who believed the government in the promises that they made at the last election and voted for them based on those promises because they are failing to deliver on the cornerstones of their own election pledges. This is a government that purport to be good economic managers but really can't walk the talk because they're not delivering on it. They're driving New Zealand further and further into debt, and as the debt piles up, they don't have a plan, a sustainable plan to turn that round. What they're hoping is for a recovery in dairy prices, a recovery that is highly unlikely to come, because let's be clear, the fall in dairy prices has left a massive, massive hole in the New Zealand economy, and the government don't have any plan to plug it. We're going to be back here again next year, almost certainly debating yet another deficit by this government because they don't have a plan to turn around New Zealand's economic fortunes.
are called Andrew Bailey.